For South Korea, we do have many robotic systems. Uh, our is a small country, only uh, size of U U.S. state of Ohio, uh, and the population is only 50 million. I understand in India there are 1,000 million or more people uh, living today. Uh, we do have 36 systems. Uh, I was speaking with Mr. Vatikuri this morning. Uh, it is expected to surpass the number of robotic systems in Korea end of this year. So we'd like to share how it happened in Korea and then the urology overview. So for the robotic surgery, it's just been just about more than 10 years. Uh, if you see the number of cases performed, uh, it is skyrocketing. It is projected to be more than 1 million cases in a few years. And then the, if you see the number of cases in 2001, 2005, in the entire world, it was only about 20,000 cases. And the number, number of publications that we're talking about, the feasibilities, complications, and then we are achieving the academic, uh, the necessary facts gathering from the robotic surgical cases. So for the milestones in urology, uh, the robot itself uh, first approved in heart in US in 1999. And then in 2001, the, just after the US FDA cleared the robotic system for radical prostatectomy, uh, my mentor, Dr. Menon, uh, purchased the Da Vinci robot and performed the, one of the first cases in the United States. And then ever since, uh, it was a miracle, I think. Uh, everything just totally changed in urology. Uh, even the, after the adoption of uh, other robotic procedures in urology in 2005, now I think I can honestly say that robotic surgery is standard of care in many parts of the robotic surgery now, all over the world. So if you break down the number of uh, surgeries, uh, the systems, uh, here in Asia now there's more than 100 systems available. Uh, Japan will probably surpass the number of systems this month, January, more than 36 uh, robotic systems installed. China with little problems, they will probably pick up this year. India, I'm very here to uh, hear that the, uh, it will uh, just follow the lead of the uh, United States and Europe. So at Yonsei uh, 2005, we had many skepticisms. Uh, it will be viable, it will be financially okay, it's too expensive. Uh, the, manager, the management purchased the 13th robotic systems in Asia. Uh, back then, the India had robotic systems already. And then the Koreans, as anything else, we concentrate and then we try to do uh, more cases uh, in a very short period of time. So at Beyonce, we were very happy to see you know, all of our surgeons involved in robotic surgery. Our urology is comprising only one third. General surgery, thyroid surgery, the GIN surgery is very well balanced program. And then we are very happy to uh, come up with many procedures developed at uh, Yonsei uh, to share uh, to share with other surgeons uh, all over the globe. So I'm very honored to uh, learn from the master, Dr. Menon, and the Vatican Institute in 2005 of the few procedures, uh, back then, uh, back to me was the main procedure. Uh, you see the list of the surgeries that were developed uh, robotically by the Vatican Institute and the Henry Ford Hospital under the leadership of Dr. Menon and Dr. Peabody. Uh, so many, many uh, surgeries. Uh, even today, I probably have only done one third of those type of surgeries. So I think that speaks for the how uh, you, know, you have to be innovative and aggressive and cr uh, courageous to perform all these procedures successfully. For the robotic prostatectomy, we heard very nice presentation by Dr. Menon this morning. Now there is no dispute. It's going to stay. It will be standard of care. Only issue probably will be the cost. Uh, so in the United States, now people are saying more than 70%, 80% of all surgical procedures are done robotically. Uh, one caveat was the regimen of training. How are we going to train uh, the young surgeons? I don't think there is no dispute. Uh, I don't think there is no dispute anymore because now the in training institutions in the United States, in Korea, all have robotic systems. I, I think it's a question of where you know there will 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 we ever go back to the era of without endoscopic surgery, without electricity? I think the robotics will probably stay. 
Uh, for the procedures, those of you who are not urologists, um, uh, we call it the VIP procedure. Uh, I was very shocked in 2005 visiting uh, Detroit. Uh, Dr. Menon did not open the endopelvic fascia, which was considered as a standard procedure. And then I just couldn't believe and understand what was happening in front of my eyes. And now, after seven years, uh, I, I'm trying to uh, imitate what Dr. Menon has been uh, performing for many, many years, more than 5,000 cases in his institution. So this is one of the ways we can use robotic technologies to do better surgeries as a surgeon and, and offer better outcomes for our patients. And then there are the other implications, other modifications of our surgery, uh, but the robotic systems really has helped us help guys like me practice in remote part of the Asia to learn on time, real time. It doesn't, new surgical procedures are developed, we can learn on the online, we can use DVDs, we can use courses like this to learn really fast. The dissemination of surgery, the advancement, has never been the same. I think it will be faster uh, with the, uh, the surgical robotic systems av available today. And then we'll speak more about the lymph node dissections and more cancer surgeries tomorrow in urology session. It is doable. Uh, we can do probably a better cancer operation with robotic surgery. And now we have a early uh, experience in single incision surgery. Uh, we can make one hole, we do two surgery. Uh, I'm not gonna go in detail about partial nephrectomies. Uh, I think it made my job much easier. We have the master, Dr. Matri from Belgium. So I think everyone can do with uh, better outcomes with the uh, robotic systems. And this can be extended to uh, nephroureterectomy. We treat ureteral and renal pelvis cancers this way. So, so robotics is, a, I think, it's like a pencil. Uh, it is, it's a how to write your calligraphy. It doesn't depend upon your pencil. I think it depends upon the surgeons, and the writer's expertise. Same for the robotic surgery. But it, it actually make it much easier. So kidney procedures are very straightforward. I don't think uh, in Korea we don't do kidney procedures much because uh, the, it, is, it can be done by laparoscopic surgery, but like the, the great uh, Indian experience. But I do feel that the approaching the deep pelvis, uh, very narrow areas, it, it is really an adventure. It, uh, is, it is a really a good technology to uh, attack uh, the very narrow areas. Uh, and then the last year, the, a lot of excitement came in. Uh, in urology, there is a, a fluorescent imaging techniques now available. Uh, the, the, the US FDA approved the uh, VESPA system last month. So we expect to see the VESPA system probably later half of this year. Uh, this is a single incision, a curved instrument. So maybe applicable for cholecystectomies and appendectomies or a few of the GIN and colorectal procedures. This is a small video clip, an early video clip on the cadaveric case where you can do a cadaveric uh, cholecystectomy this way. So I think uh, if the cost is justifiable, this, these techniques pro probably will change how we practice our uh, way do we do surgery. So Intuitive Surgical a few years back has announced that we'll, they will probably focus on these issues uh, from this year, the image guidance, simulation, haptics, the automation surgery, telesurgery, and training is all probably available in very near future. So in future, there are many, many options. There will be networking, training, advanced instrumentation. Uh, I'd like to share a comment from Dr. Menon in 2009, where uh, one of the international uh, conferences, uh, he suggested that robotics will be more popular Da Vinci will be replaced by its sons and daughters. Cost will, uh, sorry. Cost will decrease and younger generation will be more comfortable. I think he was correct. Uh, the sons and daughters are being developed in Korea and many parts of the world. I think uh, we need some time for actual validation and clinical validation. But I think it all comes down to this, uh, laparoscopic surgery, robotic surgery, how you call it. Uh, if you look at from 10 years now, I think we are discussing, we'll probably see much, much more newer systems. So this is a picture, uh, I, thought, I thank Dr. Menon and Vatikuri Institute 
Uh, I had a big problem in 2005 when we first bought the robotic system. I was so struggling, so I, I traveled to Hong Kong and asked for advice. And Dr. Menon was kind enough to uh, teach me how to do this procedure with the laptop computer. So I went over the early learning curve. And then I'd like to share our experience at uh, Yonsei. Uh, it was donated and founded 100 years ago by a philanthropist uh, from Cleveland with 25 US thousand dollars. Now Yonsei system, uh, annual revenues are more than one billion system. I think what uh, Mr. Vatakuri uh, has uh, started and Dr. Menon and the Henry Ford Group has shown us probably is a small start. And I thank you very much for everyone to, for the opportunity to be, to be here. Thank you very much. Thank you.